Hey, I'm Brian Vance, SportBikeTrackYear.com, and today we are going to break down the Spiegler non-ABS brake line kit install on our 2018 Kawasaki Ninja 400 STG project. All right, if you follow this project at all, you've already seen me install this awesome Spiegler line kit on the bike with the ABS that it came equipped with from the factory. Now you'll see in my hands, I have all those good looking green brake lines along with that steel brake pipe that are part of the ABS brake line routing. This is the ABS brake pressure modulator valve and module. We've removed this from the bike too. Max and I are gonna take this thing track day in and road racing now. And when you do that, ABS is not going to be the way to go. It's great on the street. It's the kind of feature that can really bail your ass out if you need it. But for the racetrack, it seems to be a bit of a roadblock, right? And prevents you from going as fast as you could or having as much feel as you need to have. This video, we're gonna focus solely on the installation, the removal of the ABS lines, and the installation of the non-ABS lines. I'm going to go over the routing very carefully. We're going to talk about some key points, right? Some little changes I made here and there to really get this dialed in. In terms of removing this, you can't just take this off and just throw it away. You do that, you're going to have an inoperative speedometer, and you're also going to lose the, the signal that the I'm all okay, it's all good in the hood signal that goes from this module to the ECU. At the end of the day, when you have a vehicle that has multiple modules on it that are communicating over data lines, best practice is to always keep that connected. FTECU has developed an ABS delete part that we've installed on this. We have a full video on that. But if you're considering converting your Ninja 400, to a track only bike removing the ABS, I want you to really consider whether or not you want that Speedo going and just know up front that if you choose not to do the delete, you're gonna lose some things. Stay tuned, I'm gonna get this thing all torn apart and show you what it took to get these lines put on. Okay, air box removal. Let's go ahead and come back here and disconnect that sensor. You wanna make sure that you've got your index finger under this release here. Squeeze that and never pull by the wires. Always pull by the connector, pull that off. We've got a 10 mil hex head up here at the front. We'll go ahead and pull that. And then the throttle bodies. This is a twin cylinder, so there are two throttle bodies. There is a three millimeter internal hex fastener that's going to hold the boots to the throttle body. We'll try to raise the side up a little bit here and show you it is right here, okay? Make sure you've got it loose enough that it will allow it to slip off. Vent hose, pull a clamp, just squeeze the hand to remove, and then just work this thing away. We do have another vent hose here in the back, the way back center. This one's 
got this really bizarre clamp on it. Like you squeeze it, it just gets all cockered. Not a lot of uh, extra length on that vent hose either. There you go. Air box off, we're gonna lower the blank back down. And now we need to remove this cross brace right here. They're using that to mount up, uh, obviously the air box, hold that wiring harness there. So we'll go ahead and grab a socket, T-handle, and get that off of there. It's a 12. A little more torque there, you may need a ratchet. T-handle, I really had to get on it to make that break loose. Okay, over here. Release this retainer, like so. Slide that bad boy off, like so. Throttle cables, this bracket 100% needs to go back on a motorcycle. So now, look at the access we have. We're gonna easily be able to get in here and facilitate removal of this hard brake pipe, all the brake lines, as well as our ABS unit from our Ninja 400. Okay, here we go. We are eliminating the ABS on our Kawasaki Ninja 400 STG project bike. In typical Brian Van style, right? I am in go mode because I need to have this bike race ready by next Wednesday. What is today? What is today, Caleb? Today is Wednesday. I have one week. What do I have to do? I have to delete the ABS, get the flash tune ABS delete installed. We have to drain the coolant, put in track ready, track approved coolant. We got to do a clutch mod so we don't burn up the clutch. We need a new front rotor, new front brake pads. I need to do a flash tune. We have to build the front forks. We've started installing the rear shock, ran into a little snag there. So really not a big deal because this is my life and I'm used to it. Let's focus now on the brake lines. We already did the video where we installed the Spiegler ABS friendly brake line kit on our Ninja 400. And you know what? And that's been a really popular kit for us. A lot of folks that were using this on the street, they're just leaving it. We're going to race this bike. Max specifically is going to race this bike, but before he races it, dad's going to build it and take it out while he rides his little R3 and hopefully throw the kid a butt whipping. You don't want to do that with the ABS on the bike, okay? I want to have a direct connection between this brake lever, my fingers, and the front brake. So we have to get all the ABS off the bike. This kit we're going to be installing is going to have a line, a single line that goes from our master cylinder to our front caliper. On the back, it'll go from master cylinder to rear caliper. Currently, with the ABS the way it's set up, we have a line that goes from the master to the ABS valve, from the valve to the caliper. Same thing in the rear, master to valve, valve to caliper. So we're really gonna be simplifying this, debulking in here, we'll lose a little bit of weight when we remove that ABS unit as well. First thing that I want to do, and I have the tools here to do it, you may not have these at home, I'm going to evacuate the brake system completely, okay? I'm going to use a power bleeder to do that. It's a really very simple process if you have these tools, and I realize these aren't super common, okay? So this may not completely apply to you. I'm going to remove the reservoir cap from our front brake master. You'll need to have that removed in order to completely drain the system. Once I've done that, we'll get a eight millimeter wrench for our bleeder screw down here. This is easy, just gonna open it up, squeeze the trigger, pull the lever in a little bit. Once it draws a vacuum, it will just start emptying the fluid out of the master cylinder. You can see the levels dropping now. I will completely evacuate here and we will completely evacuate 
the rear master using this identical procedure. Another thing we're gonna be doing is we're going to be eliminating this rear brake reservoir. We're gonna put this little super bike reservoir kit on at the same time. You really don't need a lot of fluid for the rear. It just kind of debulks everything. You will drop the tiniest little bit of weight. We still need to drain the system back here. And it's quite possible, you know, if your setup's a little different, you might just leave this reservoir in place. Oops. There is nothing wrong with that if that's how you want to do it. I feel like I'm at the dentist right now in the chair. Everything but the drill, my man. Okay. It's really important to remember too, with brake fluid, this stuff is hard on paint. Okay, so you wanna do the best you can to clean any surfaces that come in contact with the brake fluid almost immediately. What can you use to clean it? You know, a lot of different things, soap, mild soap with some water, uh, Windex, a lot of different things will, will work well for that. Go back with Calvin. We are all empty. And now we're ready to start disassembling the lines that we already have on the bike. Okay, now before we just start taking banjo bolts off, what I want to do is I really want to prep it so that I can remove the lines from the motorcycle as quickly and easily as possible. You know, with this ABS install, we had uh, used all of the stock mounting points, right, for the wheel speed sensors, brake lines. So what I want to do is I want to go through here and I want to slide the line and or the uh, wheel speed sensors out of those mounting points, just get it all good and free and get myself to a point where once I'm able to remove the banjo bolts from the ABS valve assembly, that I can then go down to the other banjo bolt and begin to remove the lines from the bike cleanly. If you start taking a bunch of banjo bolts out and you have left the uh, all the wheel speed, and all the mounting points in place, you're just gonna open the door for having the brake fluid dribbling all over the place while you're waiting to disconnect that stuff. I need to open this up here a little bit. This bracket is welded to the swing arm. That's just need to bend it just enough so I can get the brake line under it without damaging it. Using very light pressure there. Okay. Just beginning back here with the rear line. And there are several mounting points here. I remember this this install for being such a you know small kit. You know, it's just a two-line kit, one for the front, one for the rear. It was fairly complicated if you were preserving your ABS. Certainly much more so than if you were going to be eliminating or installing on a motorcycle that is not equipped with the ABS from the factory. A couple of cable ties that I put in here. I think there was a tick. I was in the wetlands at home during lunch, no judgment. But I just killed the tick on camera. Next up, Lyme disease. Okay. And check that out. There's just a lot, a lot of mounting points here. 
And that's gonna to look totally different now. We might be able to eliminate some of these brackets too, you know, as we go through this, uh, this install. That's something I'll look at doing. A little eight mil I need to get in there and take that off. Just remove this little trim panel here. Caleb's just asking, what am I gonna do with that? I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna put those plastic pieces back on there or not. TBD for right now. You know, like even with his R3, you know, we kind of, the project just evolves. You know, we've done a, a lot of different things to it now that it's just a, a race bike. And this is just this little bracket back here, right? The line and the wheel speed sensor are held in place by it. This may or may not still be necessary. I mean, it's not super heavy, but still, it definitely adds a little bit of weight. And, you know, the idea here is to now get the bike as light as possible. We'll also be able to remove this steel brake line here. So I'm gonna release that from its mounting point as well. We will no longer need that retainer that they have in there from the factory. So let's go ahead and kind of release that. With projects like this one too, we're, we're converting something. You know, we try to show you guys as much as we can during the actual install, but the reality is the, the more times I work on the bike after the project, you know, it just gives me the opportunity to really refine it. And I would encourage you to, to do the same thing too. You're making mods like this, you know, the, the place that you end up, the first result may not always be the ultimate end result. Front brake line, same deal. Got our wheel speed sensor there. Got a mounting point here. We definitely want to retain all of our wheel speed sensors. Make sure you don't damage anything. bracket up here I see by the steering head that's probably going to get shit canned I don't think we're going to really have any need for that okay now we're ready to start pulling some lines off the bike and from there we'll get the the BPMV we'll get that off the motorcycle even though I've completely evacuated the system I always like to plan for the worst my expectations are we are going to have some residual brake fluid you know I want to try and capture that and if you don't have the tools that I use to evacuate this odds are you're going to have a little more so you might want to fortify this with some thicker rags. We're going to have a mixture of 14 and 12 mil hex banjo bolts. That's because we've already replaced the brake lines on this bike with the Spiegler kit. The 12 mil is going to be the banjo bolt that goes to the steel line the steel pipe is still in the system that goes from the brake pressure modulator valve to the rear of the bike just so you're all aware i i did have my wife give me a thorough tick inspection last night after you saw the uh, tick massacre earlier in this video and good news I came back clean. I like to look at the bright side with everything and you know, a little tick crawling around on you is just a great excuse to be naked with your wife and that's just the way. Okay. So I didn't have a little bit of brake fluid spill out there. Also weight is part. See how much we're reducing the uh, weight of the little ninja here. Okay, now we need to switch to a 12. These are all common hand tools that I'm using right now. 
Okay, got all those off. Really not too, too much fluid lost here, which is good. I'm gonna wipe off just some of the fittings here. Try and catch a couple drops, because we're gonna have to pull these through. That just opens the, the door for the possibility of making a mess. All right, now we'll come up to our master cylinder. You can clearly see we've really got the bike in a state of disassembly right now, you know, and I think that uh, that's just what it's going to take to facilitate a project like this. You want to have nice clean access to every every spot here. So I would recommend to anyone performing this on their bike, just take all the body work off. You can leave the tail section on, really no reason to, to take that off, but everything else absolutely I think needs to come off. We're going to try and preserve these lines. Maybe we'll clean them up, see if somebody would like to take them and put them on their little ninja. They are in great shape, and truth be told, they weren't really used a whole heck of a lot. Didn't do a lot of street riding. By the time I built this bike, my son had started riding on the racetrack, and that's just what we've been doing. Instead of going for two up street rides with the old man, we're out there riding together, so these lines are like brand new, so I'm sure somebody could put these to good use. A shame to just throw them in the garbage. Okay, and there's a line that goes from the uh, brake pressure modulator down to the front cow. Really trying to pay attention there to see if I spill anything. All right, now we'll be ready to raise the bike up and we'll fish out the rear lines. Okay, and now we're gonna disconnect that uh, steel brake pipe that's still on the bike from the speaker line that we'd installed previously. Stones here. Okay, we're just going to leave that right there to collect that. And then we'll pull the banjo off the rear caliper. Okay, banjo bolt back here at the rear caliper. Remember when I installed these lines on the bike? I mean, we did ride a few times afterwards. Everything else was original equipment, still stock. But boy, the lines really made it massive difference in the performance of the brakes on our little Ninja. Okay, put this one inside. Okay, now we'll get this solid brake pipe out of here. Really, this isn't going to be reused for anything. This could, you could just destroy this. Nobody's going to miss it. Got the banjo here at the rear master. It won't be long, we'll be ready to install our new lock kit. Losing a little bit of fluid there, just trying to contain it. Okay, all the lines are off the bike. You saw everything was taken off. This is what we're putting back on. Here's our rear line. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back here until we're ready. 
And here is our front line. Spiegler puts these handy little stickers on it, master cylinder first, okay? So obviously this is going to go to the caliper. This is our front brake line. Make sure you pull the sticker. If you have any residue that's on the fitting in that area, you wanna try and remove that as well. Your brakes are pretty important. You wanna get a good seal. Let's go ahead now and just take a moment and let's slide this up in here and let's mock it up real quick and just see what we're looking at. You are able to rotate the fittings on these lines. To help you get a nice, real kink-free install. That is one of the real benefits of this. Okay, so I like the way that looks. What we're going to do is we're going to grab one of our banjo bolts, two crush washers. Good looking aluminum banjos here. We're changing the color scheme a little bit. This is now the STG blue and white, so no more green. And we'll just get this up into position here. Make sure you got your fitting so that it's parallel with that mounting surface. And then we're just gonna just finger tight. All right, just run that down. Bang, bang, that looks pretty good. Let's take a look here, what we got. You can slide and adjust this as needed. Let's take a look there, all right. And then coming down. And the first thing I can tell you is I wanna put it on the other side of the wheel speed sensor because we are going to retain that. Just gonna roll that over. So, slide this up a little bit, get another banjo bolt over here, two crush washers, banjo crush, make sure everything's clean, you don't have any debris in there, fitting, and then on the other side, of course, we'll put the crush washer, that was a great time to clean the surface of the brake component you're gonna mount it to. In this case, we're mounting it to the caliper. All right, grab the line here. Let's line this up and see if we're even gonna to need to rotate these fittings. This looks pretty darn good right now. So I don't think I'm even gonna to need to adjust fittings on this one. Look at that. Go. Yeah, it looks really good. That's threading in super easy. So in the case of the front line, there's not even a need to rotate the fittings on the end of the lines. If you do need to do that on your install, we have several other Spiegler brake line videos on our, our site, our YouTube channel. If you need to do it, just go take a look at what we've got there. And there will be several examples. I need to adjust this grommet just a wee bit. Okay, now you'll note that unlike the ABS system, the ABS line kit that we've removed from the bike, Spiegler does not include provisions to just reuse these clips. Why is that? Well, this is the non-ABS line kit. So these little plastic clips, we don't need those anymore. We're still able to reuse this factory mount here, this factory mount down here. I like the way both of those look. That, that looks pretty darn good. You got one up here. Myself, I'm going to look at that for right now and then we'll really review it a little closer once we have the bike off the table, I can sweep the bars back and forth, but I don't know that I see any need to adjust that at all. We're just gonna use those three mounting points. And now I wanna look at this, and something that's really important too is you wanna make sure that you've got enough brake line, okay, to deal with the extension of the forks, okay? And that's something that we are going to double check, especially because I'm gonna put a K-Tech 4 kit in this, pretty ambitious for next week. K-Tech 4 kit, 
And we're gonna totally change the geometry. I believe when I'm done, there's only gonna be 10 millimeters of tube sticking above the triple clamp. That's about half of what's there now. So we're gonna to need to make sure that we have enough slack in this brake line to deal with that additional geometry. That's a very important lesson that I learned slightly the hard way. Now torquing these banjo bolts. I'm not going to use a torque wrench here. I'm gonna rotate it till it's seated. These are aluminum. Spiegler does include instructions. They include torque specs. If that's what you prefer to do, feel free. That is not what I do with these. And with that said, you don't put a tremendous amount of torque on these because all you end up doing is damaging and or breaking the bolt. You can literally feel that moment when it's right where it needs to be and that's where I'm gonna stop. Right there. And that's also, I mean, I've been wrenching on stuff professionally and then this since I was 16 years old and in case you're wondering, I'm almost 49. So we have our front line all buttoned up and now we're ready to go to the back. Once again, Spiegler is included. Nice little sticker, rear master cylinder. We're gonna go ahead and pull that. There's a little bit of adhesive on there. We're gonna clean that off. If it's really heavy, you can just get a cleaner, some type of solvent, if you feel the need. Now let's take a look at this bad boy and see what we're gonna be reusing here in terms of mounts. How's this gonna fit in? Okay. This is gonna be over here. grab a banjo and I'm going to start at the back. I do think I'm going to need to rotate here so I've got banjo crush. And then we're going to go ahead and fire it through the fitting. Fitting and another crush washer. All right, and then let's move it up into position here. Now these brackets are actually welded onto the swing arms. So let's try and get the line under that bad boy. I showed you that during the removal. The other side, one more room to operate with. There is the spot where it's going to mount up. Okay. Started just finger tight. You know, in this case, we're modifying the bike from stock a little bit. You know, it came with an ABS kit. Now we're shoehorn non ABS kit on there. It's a whole different deal. And as we go through it, I just want to make sure I take my time and get everything routed just right. All right, now the rear master. Definitely gonna need to rotate the fitting here so we'll have the opportunity to show you guys that. Okay, now just show you how patient you need to be. See, I slid the line into the mounting point that it needs to go in and man, it needs to rotate just a little bit more. So, you know, always exercise the patience required to get the job done right. So I don't know that Kale is even gonna show the full rotation this time or not. I don't know that's really relevant, but just show you, you know, we, Try to go the extra mile and make sure the project's as good as it can be. You know, things don't always go perfect the first shot. That should look really good. Get a little confident, just put our banjo crush through the fitting, another banjo, and now Need to get this one in position. You gotta flex the line a little bit here, so I'm gonna take a little pressure. This rear reservoir, too, I'm gonna to be deleting that. The super bike kit I got. All right, run that down. Be ready to torque these banjos up. 
Time to bleed the brakes. We're gonna start in the back. You know what, and I had an idea because on all of our bikes now we have these super bike reservoir kits and it is kind of a challenge to get the fluid poured in there and not make a mess. So I decided I'm gonna keep the little reservoir cup from our Ninja. I'm gonna use that to bleed the rear brakes on all of our bikes as needed. To be fair, that's not something we do very often. Because quite frankly, there just isn't a need to do it. So we're gonna use this as like a little funnel. Make my life easier. So Caleb was just asking, why are you putting this on here? It just cleans this area up at the end of the day. You know, we don't really use the rear brake very much on the track. And also it doesn't require a tremendous amount of fluid to support, you know, having a fully functioning rear brake. And obviously I'd never advocate for not having a fully functioning rear brake because you never know when you may need it. Um, but you don't really need a lot of fluid taking the reservoir off and on this Ninja, you're taking this little bracket off, you're, you're eliminating a little bit of weight and you're just cleaning this area up. So that's why we've chosen to do that. Speed bleeder bag and hose kit. You can tell I use this thing quite a bit. We sell these on the site. It's the best 10 bucks you're ever gonna spend. It just makes for a much cleaner job. Got that on my bleeder screw. Got my eight mil wrench. What I'm gonna do is open the bleeder, push down, hold down, close the screw. I'm gonna repeat that process until I have good fluid flow into our speed bleeder bag and hose kit. And we're starting to get some. You do wanna make sure you're keeping an eye on the fluid level here. Okay, now once I've got fluid flow, and you see that drops rapidly now inside of that Superbike reservoir. So we're gonna to top this bad boy off now. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and pump this a couple times. It's actually already got a great pedal. Hold it down, open the screw. We'll repeat this just a few times. Now I wanna do it just enough to make sure that I've got my fluid level here. See, I had a little bit in my funnel. Right where I want it, because I wanna make sure I leave a pretty healthy air gap here. Probably bleed her one more time. It's about as good as she's gonna get. I wanna lower that, I think, just a little bit more. So I'll hit it one more time. Maybe even one more. Yep, that'll work. Plenty of fluid in there now. Make sure my screw is tight. Pull the hose, reuse that cap. Okay, and then we'll be ready to finish off the uh, reservoir here, secure that. Pretty excited to get this bike out there. These lightweights are just such a cool alternative, man, to the 600s, 750s, 1000s. Less expensive to purchase, less expensive to maintain, less expensive to build, but boy, they teach you just so much about riding, you know, momentum riding, that you can even carry over to a larger CC bike. That's just a, a little breather cap that we have here. It's a little kit that we sell. We're actually out of them right now. We need to make some more. It's Max's job. Um, get his butt in gear. Okay, I'm gonna grab a couple of cable ties to secure this 
out of the way, and then we'll be ready to go work on the front. I do want to also point out, I made some adjustments back here. I decided not to use this grommet mount. I took a hacksaw and I cut that off, right? There's that little eyelet that was there. Cut that bad boy right off the swing arm. Cut the grommet off the brake line very carefully, okay, so as not to damage the line. You know, for this racing application that we've got going here, here's that eyelet. It just, not necessary. This is the right routing. I've got enough here to allow for length and axle or wheelbase changes, right? And that's something that's really important. And just further cleaning this area up, I reused the two mounts for the ABS sensor wire. I'm going to shore this up here somewhere with a cable tie. That's just a little, it's flopping around a little more than I'd like. That could get itself into harm's way. I'll find a nice little spot and throw a cable tie in it. And, uh, Cable tie this out of the way. Now we'll move to the front. Mirror image of what we showed you there in the back. Let's get that speed bleeder bag and hose kit installed on that bleeder screw. Kind of let that chill out down there. Take the cover off of our front master cylinder. We also have a set of Vesra ZZ pads and a Galfer race rotor for this bike. Um, as I understand it, if you're a fast rider, heavy breaker, this OE disc when you're on the racetrack turns into a dish very, very quickly. So we want to try and avoid any issues. So we'll be installing that brake disc and, and those brake pads today. So this braking system on our little ninjas can be pretty badass when we're done here. Same gig is in the rear. We're going to keep a good eye on that fluid there. Open the screw, squeeze the lever, hold, close screw, release lever. We will repeat that until we have good fluid flow. Line's a little bit longer. Takes a few more pumps to get her all moving. Up front here. Just gonna pump the master real easy a few times. This one's being a little more difficult. There we go. Very careful not to let that master go empty. So I'm gonna top it off. Got some good fluid movement there. Now we'll pump the lever up three, four times. Hold it, open the screw, release it. When the screw is closed, we'll repeat that process a few times. And we're starting to get a good lever now. There we go. Okay, it's time to top it off. The air is all out. Go ahead and top it off. Super important with brake fluid, especially in the front, man. You don't want to overfill this. There needs to be an air gap to compensate for fluid expansion okay we go right there it's on an angle you need to be cognizant of that right the right way to really fill and properly check this is going to be with the bars rotated okay i believe to the left side is going to get that master cylinder more level right and that'll allow you to check that properly so we're gonna leave it at the level I have it at right now. And I just wanna advise you that I'm gonna circle back and double check it because we're gonna be replacing pads on this as well. You know, and you wanna make sure that when you're looking through that sight glass, you've got the proper level. But once again, you can see how this is on such an angle right now. 
that the fluid is very high on the bottom and very low on the top. So turning the bars is truly the right way to check this. Okay, master cylinder cap is back on. And something that I like to do is I like to get a cable tie set up while I'm wrapping the project up so I can hold the brake lever in, pump it up several times, hold it, get this cable tie set up. And what this does is just kind of helps you finish off that brake bleed a little bit. It doesn't have to be crazy tight or anything. It's just about just holding it. And if there's any air that's in there while we're on the table, shaking this thing around, it'll just sort of meander its way up to the top. Before we begin reassembling the bike, I do want to show you, I made a little change up front here too. Once again, we're focused on a race bike application this time, ABS elimination. Still, we need to preserve the functionality of the wheel speed sensors. Okay, so what I chose to do is there was a bracket up here that held the horn in place. 86 that, no need for a horn anymore. And it also held this uh, brake line as well as this wheel speed sensor harness. I just used a couple of cable ties to secure that. I'm probably ultimately gonna end up cutting this grommet off the line here. There's really no reason for that to be there now. Okay, but just want to give you a little update on the routing and also state this is an off-road, you know, track day racing application. When we come back, I'll begin reassembling the bike. All right, let's begin to button this bad boy up. We've got an air box that's got to go back on here. I pulled the rags that I had wound up in there. I also used a blowgun just to blow it out, just to head to my bed. You want to make sure that those are completely clean. You don't have anything that's going to fall inside the engine. And get this bracket back in place. This does have the throttle cables routing through it, so you want to make sure that you've got that in there and installed correctly. This bracket needs to be left on the bike. You know, what I didn't take into account before when I started to tie some of this stuff up was this very bracket. So we're going to go ahead and use it to hold these connectors. It's going to be pretty sweet, actually. All right, so we're going to be able to do some stuff here. Make it look good. Okay. Lock in place there, and even this, and I really like that. We're gonna be able to tie that bad boy up on there. Piece of cake, it's gonna look really good. Grab another cable tie here. Okay, and here's what I'm gonna do here. Slide that actually under the ties that I already have placed there. That way I can mount it to that surface nice and flush. I gotta tell you, I'm actually pretty happy with that. That's pretty bitching. Looks nice and it's gonna hold everything together real well. tail off of that. This looks semi-professional. Semi-pro. All right, throttle cable. I'm gonna double, double check that. Okay, it's time to put the air box back on. Start by pulling out those rags that we had in place. This hose is a little bit of a pain in the ass to put back on. So what I did here is I actually took off the little frame brace over here on the right side to get myself a little access to get in there. It is probably gonna be really, really hard for Caleb to show you anything worth looking at. That clamp is something I got a shit can to it. This thing's really a pain in the shorts. A little 
all for the stupid breather hose. Love it. Okay. Once you got that back up on there, it's phenomenal, a lot of fun. Let's get the other vent line. Okay, now you wanna line this up with both throttle bodies and kind of wiggle it around and you'll feel it literally just kind of drop down. I'm gonna put the bolt in the front of it. A little 10 mil hex fastener. And then the clamps that hold the throttle bodies on, those are three mil internal hex. Three mil T. I want to make sure that throttle body is seated all the way. The boot is seated on the throttle body, I should say, all the way down. That was a four mil. That was a four mil, we needed three mil, man. There we go. It's a harsh reality. If it's within 18 inches of my eyes, I can barely see it. Love it. Okay, three mil. Take your uh, frame brace over here. This is so easy to take on and off either side that, you know, if at any point you're working on the bike and you're like, man, if I could just get my hand in there, you are too, 12 mil hex fasteners away from literally just getting your hand in there. So don't be afraid to take that off. Torque goes up. Let's go to the other side. Get that boot. First thing you wanna do is look down and make sure that it's all the way down, which it is. Go ahead and snug that up. Like so. Okay, let's start off by putting our fuel line back on. I want you to rotate that while putting a little pressure forward until you feel it seat all the way. And you can kind of feel it clip in place and push in on the lock. Go ahead and rotate and pull out. You want to make sure that there's no way in hell that thing's coming off of there. So give it a little wiggle and tug to make sure we're good to go. Plug the sensor back in, back to the air box, like so. Now we're ready for the fuel tank itself. When reinstalling this, okay, you're gonna slide those two locator pins inside the rubber grommets. Before we're able to do that, obviously we have to plug in our fuel pump and reconnect our fuel line. So I'm gonna support the tank, come around here, fuel pump connector, get that plugged in. You want to make sure you've kind of got your tank captured the whole time you're holding on to it. Make sure you have positive engagement there. It's actually slid off its mounting point. Get that re-engaged. Might be able to do that once I've got the tank back on. Fuel line, same thing that we did. All right, same deal. Slide it on, kind of wiggle it. And he's not gonna be able to show you really much of anything right now, which is kind of a bummer. Because it's just really tight down here. So you want to be able to slide that on. I just totally blocked everything. Slide the lock in place. Verify that you've got a good positive click. Now you want to slide the tank back a little bit. Get those locator pins to dip into the grommet on each side and then just kind of light pressure forward and 
and you'll feel it literally just drop right in there. Kind of hard to do this on camera. I'm trying to preserve a line of sight for you all to see it and then, you know, be able to see it clearly myself. Probably did not look super coordinated there. And that's okay. Here are the rear mounting bolts for the fuel tank. We'll go ahead and put those in. Let's get those torqued up. That's 10 millimeter hex head. Really basic stuff. Make sure you've got them torqued up good. I'm going to grab my little stool so I can sit down, see in there, and get that plug for the fuel pump reconnected on its mounting base. Okay. Okay. Slide that back over like so. It just held on there very loosely. Still, you want to have it in place. Over here on the left side, we've got those two vent lines. Right, we want to get those reconnected. They simply just push right over. And now's a great opportunity before you put the bodywork back on to take a good look at everything, especially the fuel line, the harness for the fuel pump, any of the connectors, make sure that everything is connected and secured before you begin to put any of the bodywork back on the motorcycle. Okay, there you have it. The bike is all back together and we're race ready. Excited to take this thing to Grattan Raceway, 4th of July weekend with Sport Bike Track Time. If you have any questions, what it takes, you need some help with your Ninja 400 project, I answer all the YouTube comments myself, depending on the volume, depends on how long it takes to get them done. But please leave your comment here and I'll be happy to help you get your project done right.